Hi everyone, I hope you're doing really well. My name's Arlene from An Empath's Guide Book Reviews and Writer's Corner and today I'm here for a video of an honest vlog. It's not to say that all the other videos that I do are dishonest or anything. I guess this is kind of just like a cozy chat about something that's been on my mind lately and so I thought that I would just share it with you guys and yeah, get it out there and it's always nice to have a heart to heart with a tea and your comfy pants and your comfy Paul Frank Ugg boots. So yeah, I thought I would just do it and it would be fun. So the topic that I've decided to talk about today is about, I guess sometimes feeling a little bit isolated as a writer and how this can happen. So for those of you who are authors or writers out there, I guess you would kind of have a hint of what I'm saying when I say that sometimes writing can be a very solitary process and that's not to say that it's not really fun and relaxing and therapeutic and all those wonderful things um, and I actually never really understood writers or authors when they used to say that sometimes they got a little bit lonely during the day because for me you know I thought that spending a lot of time with my characters who for me like already existed in these worlds that I made up and I was just meeting them and getting to know like their coolness and how intriguing they were. This was really fun and to me like it's more, it was more interesting than say working in an office all day and then meeting like more two dimensional characters that work in an office. No offense to any office types. But I never really understood when writers said that it was a bit of a lonely process. Um, and I guess I sort of started feeling that in the last few weeks or so and I never had before so it was a very sort of alienating and a bit of a confronting thing for me to experience. So I started, as I usually do, reflecting about the kind of causes of this and you know once the feeling had passed like what I could do to kind of I guess mend that feeling inside me and stop it being an obstacle to my writing productivity. I just want to start also by saying, just to preface this, by saying I'm by saying this I'm in no way kind of devaluing how much I love like the booktube and the author tube community. I mean the reason that I started making YouTube videos was to become a part of these communities and I think that they're wonderful and they've far exceeded my expectations so far and I sort of I can't explain the feeling of like knowing that there are so many people who adore books just like I do out there and who love writing and who are working on their passion of creating a book even though it is quite challenging sometimes and just to like see that there are other people all over the world who are doing this like me is really heartwarming and it's made me feel like the world is a smaller place and it's really beautiful so in sort of saying these things I don't want to sort of sound ungrateful and act like it doesn't mean a lot to me because it does and I'm super grateful for all the people who you know watch my videos and who I talk to and we have discussions in the comments like it's really it really lifts me up so that's fantastic and likewise I'm not trying to devalue but instead like express my gratitude for my family and friends who are super supportive and like every time you know I have really good friends they see me they ask how my book is going how my writing's going and they are really genuinely interested and want to hear about it so I'm really glad that I have that supportive community in general and really grateful for it so I sort of start by saying that first and foremost. So the reason I feel like this feeling kind of cropped up on in me recently is because I have been watching a lot, one of the reasons is I have been watching a lot of um, Brandon Sanderson lectures. So Brandon Sanderson, if you don't know him, is an epic fantasy author and he's also a lecturer at BYU um, University in the States and he does a fancy and sci-fi writing class. So his lectures are amazing. He's also got a podcast called Writing Excuses, which is equally as amazing. So I've kind of been binge watching his lectures and I always like his podcasts. But just to see like all the students kind of sitting together in the lecture hall and like talking to each other and you can see that they all love fantasy and they have this like commonality that's like almost like a bond. I kind of thought, oh, why, why didn't I study creative writing at university? Like I would have had that community of people around me who just are doing the same things and who love the same things and 
it wouldn't be as isolating and I guess just seeing Brandon Sanderson himself like he went to that same university in his writing group he's got a weekly writing group and um, there's I think about four of the authors actually went to university with him and so they meet every week and they kind of review each other's chapters that they've written and they talk about what they've written and where they're headed with it and he actually said that because they know each other's writing so well like they've known it from their university days they're so like intimately familiar with what the other writer is trying to do with their work and what message they're trying to get across that it doesn't even have to be explained and they're mostly like in the same kind of genre like spec fic, speculative fiction and um, there's also a podcast Brendan does and then there's like four or five regular podcasters and like just the way that they talk to each other and like bounce ideas off each other and laugh at the jokes like the same jokes that I like laugh so much at it's just like oh, like I wish I had that that would be so nice to have that kind of community in person because I really I love the kind of flexibility of the digital environment but I think also for me as a person like I'm very about that kind of one-on-one -on -one interaction like I'm social but like I kind of crave that like um yeah like physical contact I guess like I'm a very like touchy like affectionate person I like hugs so I guess that makes sense and so I've, I was feeling the absence of that just kind of seeing all these lectures and podcasts and things I guess that's one reason um the other reason is that I guess I just have close friends like who are who do have those communities that they really thrive in and that gives them a sense of fulfillment and I guess self-identity like I have one friend for example who is um a strong Christian and that faith kind of like makes her a better person I think and she um, goes to church on Sundays and I can really see how being in her church like gives her a sense of community and it bonds her to the people like who she has things in common with and it's really great and I have another friend my best friend Anissa who is a vegan like me and she works for Peter and so she's constantly surrounded all day by these people who share her worldview and just get it and like motivate her to keep working for that cause, which is really amazing. And I don't know, I'm really proud of, of her and them both. And um, I'm glad that they have that, but sometimes I wish that I had that too and that that would be really nice. So thinking about this stuff, I kind of like worked my way into a bit of like a weird like random emotional storm. And I had to like step back from it and just question like, why am I feeling like this? Because I have so many reasons to be grateful. Like I have the opportunity to write whatever I want. You know, I live in a country that's peaceful. There is no government that is dictating what I can and cannot write, which is like a, a blessing. I think that we sometimes take for granted. And you know, I have the time to write. I have the space, I have, the financial freedom like I don't have to be tied to a job that I hate like just to pay the bills so there's so many reasons to be grateful for so I just thought oh I'm being so precious like I should just snap out of it but then I decided to be a bit more <laughs> loving to myself and accept that I was feeling like this and think no like there must be reasons if I'm feeling it then it's valid so I thought about it and I thought about you know the other friends I have who do have office jobs when you go to an office job in the morning, you don't walk into the office and go up to your level or whatever it is and then you just work all day like and there's no one else in the office and you're just working by yourself. That doesn't happen and you know there are reasons for that I guess. I mean it helps to be surrounded by colleagues who get what projects you're working on and then you can talk to each other about it and bounce ideas off each other and um, motivate each other, like have meetings which are usually really boring and stupid and random but anyway um, and you know you have a manager that keeps you accountable a lot of the time so there are definitely valid reasons why having other people in your kind of working community helps your productivity I started to feel um, and there are actually studies that show that being in a sense of community, having a sense of community and being in an active community that regularly meets and um, is meaningful to you 
actually can increase your grit and it, it can also help be the thing that determines whether you are successful in achieving a goal or not. So one of the studies that I came across was by a psychologist called Angela Duckworth and she did her PhD on this thing called grit, which is like this combination between resilience and hard work and like deliberate practice to get you through and she basically said a sense of community is really important so it's a lot of scientific research so I'll try to be quick with this part but she said for example I think there was a study where there was a group of professional athletes who were swimmers and so a group of them actually lived together they had to wake up at 4 30 a.m every morning to start the training go jump in the pool and then there were other people who either still doing it from home or were doing it by themselves who weren't surrounded by other swimmers and so the ability of um, the success of like the athletes who woke up at 4 30 compared to the ones who didn't do it as much the ones who all lived together they just so soon after they just started after a few days just getting up and doing it and part of the reason from the study was because they were surrounded by people who were all doing the same thing so it kind of became normalized behavior and it's kind of a bit of human nature that if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing and everyone else is that you kind of just start to do it and you motivate each other subconsciously so that, that was one of the studies that i thought was interesting and another was actually this what? sorry my puppy was just scratching at the door so i thought that he wanted to meet you this is Atticus, and Atticus is a golden magical sausage. That's how I think of him. He's got one brown eye and one blue eye, and he likes the camera, and he's really, really cute, as you can see. He's three quarters Dachshund and one quarter Jack Russell. And he's super cuddly if you're ever feeling, if you're ever feeling lonely, he's super cuddly. But I try not to hug him because dogs don't like hugs, so I try and cuddle him on the side. And I'm using my baby voice, which I have used in. Okay. Okay, so back to it. After Atticus. Um, another study that, well, it wasn't a study, but a TED talk that I watched the other day by this, she's actually a relationship or connection expert, I think she calls it called Bea Voce. Um, I don't know how to pronounce her name. But she basically said that to feel less lonely or isolated, you should create these um, anchors of connection through ritual. So she gave an example of hers. So for her, she has three like really good girlfriends. And on every Monday night, they go to one of each other's houses and they have this ritual where they pull on their leg warmers, like identical leg warmers to each other, pour a glass of rosé and just sit on the couch and talk about all of life, like everything in their life for like hours, three or four hours. And she said that no matter what's going on in her life at that time, after that ritual, she always feels like she has energy and she just always feels ready to face anything. And it gives her a lot of courage and strength. So I thought that was really interesting. So after kind of trying to reflect on and educate myself on why I was feeling like this, I started to feel less harsh on myself and tried to focus on the things that I do have that, that do bring me connection like Booktube and Autotube which are amazing and I do have a writers group, it's a spec fic uh, writers group that meets monthly called Sirius and they're great, like they all know what they're talking about, they, they know the genre, they give me great feedback on thing, on the one thing that I've sent them so far, like things that I never would have even picked up on if I was um, just reviewing it by myself. So those are all amazing things. Um, I also decided to be more proactive and so I decided to go on Facebook and just reach out to some of my existing communities, one was a Sydney vegan group that I'm part of and just like on my regular friends page just asking if there are any writers and if they're interested in meeting up on Monday evenings just so we can talk about Riley things and bookish things and things that we're struggling with things that we're happy about conventions all these kinds of things share resources and um, 
I've had a good response so far. I mean, five people have emailed me back saying that it's, it's something that they're interested in. So I think that's pretty good, seeing as everyone's always really busy and this kind of thing. Five people is way better than zero people. So I'm really glad that I kind of pulled myself out of that slump and um, I don't know, I think it's always good to reflect on why you're feeling down and, and how you can change it because that's what makes you a better person, I think, makes you makes you better in everything that you do, writing included. What I learned from, from this feeling of isolation, creativity can be quite solitary, is two things. Um, the first one is to be grateful. And it's just to be grateful for the people that I already have who support what I do even though it's a little bit weird and different and they might not share it but they make an effort to get it and I think that is really awesome. And also for this digital community because they just support it, like they get it <laughs> and you, you share my passions and interests and that is really, really cool and I feel like when I reply to my comments and messages from this community like in the evening like I really look forward to it and it's kind of like a treat at the end of the day to see what videos the lovely people I've subscribed to like you have put up and it's really fun to yeah comment and, and speak with them about things that I love so I'm grateful for that too. I guess the second thing that I learned is just to reach out to people because you never know who's experiencing the same thing as you and if we kind of all suffer in silence like you never know you'll never know how many people are suffering in silence along with you and something can be done about it i want to be a good writer that's that's all i really have ever wanted <laughs> since i was young and um i also love being around people and um I get a lot from that, so it makes sense that I would love being around other writers. If we can have both digital communities and physical communities together, I think it will generally make us happier and more connected and the world would be a better place. So yes, that's pretty much it from me for this honest vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't ramble too much, because I can, especially as I just, you know, have all these thoughts and reflections and so when I bring them out there's a lot so I'll stop now but yeah thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it I'm really grateful for it and it really does make me feel like I'm more of a part of something bigger in terms of what I'm most passionate about so thank you thank you so much for watching and lots of love and I'll see you next time